I think we have to do our best to keep Bynum and Jack in front of us. We really have to lock on to shooters, especially Lewis, and we can't let B.J. Elder just have a, an unbelievable night like he had, for example, against Carolina. Lastly, I've got an announcement that's going to make a lot of you happy. We're getting all new printers and all new copiers from a company called Kyocera Mita. Tell them why, Andy. They're simple and easy to use. They're people friendly. You'll access everything from your desktop. Jen? Because they're network friendly. They produce brilliant color with a cost of ownership. Tom? That's budget friendly. People friendly copiers and printers only from Kyocera Mita. the all-new Toyota Tundra Double Cab. Not just big, life-sized. Hi. Hi. Mortgage application. Me too. The mortgage application with 80% less paperwork from Bank of America. Higher standards. ACC Sunday Night Hoops is presented by Staples. That was easy and brought to you in part by Toyota. Get the feeling, Toyota. By NikeBasketball.com and by Kyocera, the new value frontier. Welcome back to Atlanta. Great crowd here at the Thriller Dome on the campus of Georgia Tech. Their only home loss this season came against Duke. Let's take a look at our Staples G-Man game plan tonight. Time for Wake Forest uh, defensive transition. They want to limit the easy baskets that, uh, that uh, Georgia Tech gets, especially here. And for Tech, Les Paul, and not the inventor <laughs> of the electric guitar. They want to sit on Chris Paul and keep him under double figures. Paul back-to-back -back sensational games and victories over national power Cincinnati and Duke. He had 30 against the Bearcats and 23 in the victory over the Blue Devils. Shen serve to tip it off with Kyle Visser. Wake Forest controls the tip and we are underway and Chris Paul handles the basketball. Ball penetrates into the lane, gives it off to Vitas Danilus, and his shot off the mark. Nearly tipped in by Schenzer, and Jared Jack with a rebound, and for a point guard, he gets plenty of those. Averaging almost five a game, Jack off the mark with his first try, and Jamal Levy rebounds for the Demon Deacons. Well, we talked about they want to rush the ball up the floor. Give and go. Nice feed from Visser, and then Levy had it stripped away on his way to the bucket. Paul Hewitt, in his fourth season at Georgia Tech, took him to the NCAA tournament his first year. The last two seasons, very young teams, and now this club coming of age, looking for win number 20 against only six defeats. It would be a heck of an accomplishment too, Tom. Gray from downtown, and Justin Gray rattles it home. The Demon Deacons leading score at 16 per game. And, you know, you talk about an all-ACC team. He's got to be in the conversation. He has played extraordinarily well for this ball club. B.J. Elder, the leading scorer for Georgia Tech, got bumped as Visser tried to step out on the screen. Kyle Visser, freshman from Saginaw, Michigan, starting in his fourth consecutive game. Here you see Justin Gray over his last seven, over 20 points a game, a terrific percentage from downtown. And what you like to see, Tom, is a guy who does it better on the road, 19 points away from home. Big stat. Elder the fadeaway. Came up empty. Knocked out of bounds, Wake Forest basketball. Skip Prosser, meanwhile, in his third season in Wake Forest after leaving Xavier. 
A winning percentage in ACC games of over 65%, the third highest ever by a coach in this conference in their first three seasons. The others two, Vic Bubis and, of course, Bill Guthridge in his short tenure in North Carolina. Tech strips it away. Jack finds a wide open Marvin Lewis. Over the backboard and out of bounds. Well, so far, Georgia Tech playing at the pace they would like, but not getting rewarded for it. And Chris Paul getting stuck inside. Tough to make a pass. A lot of hands in that uh, area. And Tony McHenry very active. McHenry defending Paul on the full court pressure. And Paul easily beating that pressure. They're going to set a lot of back screens for Paul in the backcourt to try to free up that pressure and have guys turn around, looking around to see where uh, the picks are coming from. There's Gray, goes behind the back into the lane, floater, and it won't fall. Jack pushes ahead to B.J. Elder, and he'll go to the line, fouled by Paul. D.J. Elder getting out on the floor. We talked about it. Uh, this team can change from off defense to offense very quickly. And uh, they're trying to put pressure on Wake Forest, get them into a running game. And remember that that's not going to pay dividends right away. But they hope that uh, over the course of time, they'll take Wake's legs away from them. Elder generally a sure free throw shooter at 79%. But misses his first try over his last four games, averaging better than 20 per game. He's had two monster games. 36 against Clemson and had 30 against North Carolina. And again, Paul pressured, bumped by Elder. And they talked about that at shoot-around. Again, the same type of scenario. 40 minutes of pressuring Chris Paul. It may not show up right now, but as this game goes along, does he wear down because of it? Talked about the depth of this Georgia Tech team. Five players average double figures in scoring. Nine players average double figures in minutes. And one guy is a tenth of a minute below it at 9.9. .9. So, you know, that's, Paul Hewitt is going to run waves of people at you. Good cut by Levy and blocked on the way up. A nice feed from Kyle Visser. Mike, is this the deepest team you've seen in the country, Georgia Tech? Well, you know, certainly in the conference, and then you have to look, I think, at Stanford as a team that could match their depth. But in, in this day and age, it's rare that you guess, get past seven players, Tom. I mean, you just don't see it anymore. Or at least coaches who use seven players. But B.J. Elder has picked up two quick fouls in less than three minutes, and Georgia Tech's leading scorer will go to the bench. They bring in Ismail Muhammad, who has scored in double figures 12 times, part of that G squad off the bench. He's led him in scoring three different occasions this year. Well, Elder had foul trouble up at Maryland, only 10 points for him there, so that's been a recurring theme for him. Now, you know, they don't, they certainly pick up a little bit defensively with Muhammad in, but the scoring drops off. Luke Schenzer, the seven foot Australian, has had a terrific turnaround from last season to this season. There's Marvin Lewis. They need him to heat up, and he has been here of late. Right, it's amazing the fact that he did not score up in Maryland, and they get a turnover because of the pressure in the backcourt. All of a sudden, Muhammad in, and he has an immediate impact on this game. There's the look, the drive inside, and everybody collapses, and you can't give that man an open look. If you're running at him when he's in his shooting stroke, it's too late. Marvin Lewis over the last five games averaging 17 points per game. He's hit now 12 of his last 19 three-point attempts. Well, certainly now with Elder out, I mean, it's Wake Forest has got to mark him as a primary threat out in the perimeter, and they've got to stay at home. A rare shot from McHenry, and it's not there. Wake with a basketball leading by one. Levy pushes to Danilus in a nice catch, and he lays it in. Yeah, I love it when the big men run right underneath the rim and then turn around. Danilus got great position on the break. Jack trying to go the length of the floor, had it rejected, and now Paul pushing ahead to Justin Gray. And he'll let it fly from three. Wow. One-on-one -on -one break, and you pull up from three. Why not? Shoot first, ask questions <laughs> later. Backdoor cut to Lewis, and Danilus rips away the rebound. Visser, I think, got a piece of that shot. There's Gray again, 
And again, his third three-pointer of the game. Up in Winston-Salem, Georgia Tech came out and set the tone offensively in their first ten possessions. Wake Forest has grabbed the hold of this game early. Wake has hit four of its first six shots. We talked about, Mike mentioned it earlier, about Georgia Tech. They win games when they guard people. They're having a hard time doing that early, and they just turned it over. Justin Gray, the leading scorer for the Demon Deacons. And he watches as Danilus takes a nice feed from Levy. An early 13-4. Wake Forest lead Gray already with a trio of three-pointers. The more you discover about the Hyundai Elantra, the more it makes sense. It's loaded with standard features like AC and power everything. Plus, only Hyundai has America's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 miles. It's $1,600 less than a Honda Civic LX when comparably equipped. In fact, the 2004 Hyundai Elantra starts at just $11,339. When your car makes this much sense, you win. Get a 2004 Elantra with up to 2,500 cash back or 0% APR. So I had internet service. I liked it. Then I find out about PowerLink, Adelphia's high-speed internet service. I can't believe how fast pages download. Not only that, I don't have to tie up my phone line anymore. So now it's a breeze to shop online at my favorite stores. Then I'm thinking, I love this. Call now and get high-speed internet for $24.95 per month for five months. Ready to take control of your credit card debt? Credit Guard of America cut my monthly payments in half. Credit Guard of America is a nonprofit service that's helped thousands of people to move on with their lives. Credit Guard of America saved me over $13,000 in interest fees alone. Call now to reduce your monthly payments. Cut the interest rates on your credit cards by up to half and get your unsecured debt paid off years earlier. Don't you owe it to yourself to work with a real nonprofit service? Certified counselors are standing by. Call 800-836-2802. Zadrunas Ilgauskas represents for the Cavaliers. Jamal McGlure powers the Hornets' might. Cavaliers, Hornets, tomorrow at 7 on Fox Sports Net. I really feel like this team is about to play its best basketball of the year. Uh, early in the year, I thought we did it basically strictly on defense, rebounding, and transition, which isn't bad. That's a good start for any basketball team, but our half-court offense was not helping us much in games, but now I think our half-court offense is very good, and we now have a combination of good defense, the ability to rebound the ball, scoring transition, and if you stop that, I think our uh, our half-court offense has evolved to the point where it can really make a difference in a close ball game. Right, Paul here talked about the fact he, he felt his team was moving the basketball better from side to side, getting more assists, better player movement, but uh, at the end of the day, it's defense, and there are the numbers for Georgia Tech. You know, at the top or near the top in all the major categories. However, tonight it has been Wake's offense that has gotten off to the quick start. 13-4, Wake with a lead and with a basketball. Justin Gray only had one three-pointer in the game against Duke. That's his first miss in four tries from three-point land. And now lay it off for Teron Downey, who's checked in. Well, when this Wake team gets heated up, you better look out. They can score a bunch in a hurry. You know, good shooting is contagious, Tom. And, uh, and Gray got him going, and then all of a sudden, everybody else feels more comfortable taking a shot. An 11-0 Wake Forest run. Bynum has come on for Georgia Tech, and he misses a three. And a foul underneath will go against Clarence Moore. The senior who set out all of last year, and they are mighty glad he decided to come back and play his final year. Uh, Paul Hewitt, uh, all of a sudden now looking around, trying to get a little bump from that bench that we talked about at the open. And, you know, Will Bynum's role is instant offense, but I think if you're struggling, you need to find a little better shot than that to get you going. Work the clock a little bit more. Yeah, that bench averages 28 points per game, and a leading scorer for the Yellow Jackets has come off the bench nine times this year. Which is, you know, if... If you're a coach, that's very comforting because if your original game plan isn't going the way you want it to, you've got options to fall back on. Gray nails a three, and he was fouled on the way up. Well, Justin Gray is just, we talked about uh, a possible All-ACC performer, and he has certainly played to that billing here early. Four three-pointers to start this game. 
and he is in his zone right now, Tommy. They are throwing everybody at him, and see on this last play, coming off the nice screen, and Clarence Moore, a little slow getting out, knocks him down a possible four-point play. Justin Gray now 12 times has hit three or more three-pointers in a game with a season-high eight against Texas. Well, uh, it's, you know, the, the guy is, and when the worst thing that can happen for a defensive team, you get a scorer like that who gets in a rhythm, gets in a zone. And right now, Tom, he's not even, he's not even thinking about shooting the basketball. He's basically redirecting it up to the hoop, and that's how you feel when you're shooting like that. Clarence Moore picked up the foul, so two fouls in less than a minute and a half for Moore since coming off the bench. Remember, B.J. Elder, their leading scorer, is already sitting on the bench with two fouls. And then Gray misses a 15-footer. They should move back the charity strike for Gray. <laughs> should take it from behind the three-point arc. <laughs> Muhammad beats Strickland off the dribble. And then lost control of it. Jump ball. Possession arrow gives it back to Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech has been very loose with the basketball here early. Now that you know they had that great win up in Maryland, but keep in mind they did turn it over 20 times in that game. This certainly is not the Georgia Tech team we have seen here over the last couple of weeks. They did stub their toe in the buzzer beater at Virginia, but other than that, Paul Hewitt, you heard a moment ago, thinks his team is playing its best basketball and capable of playing even better than that. But they're in a major hole here early on, down 15, and they turn it over again. Gray got caught in the air, throws it away, and Bynum comes the other way for Tech, and he hands it right back to Lake Forest. Georgia Tech, third turnover, but uh, they've had more miscues than that that haven't resulted in turnovers, and they're playing like a group that uh, hasn't played together before here early in this game. Need to iron out a few things and get on the same page. Well, Paul Hewitt doesn't want this one to get away early on. He's going to bring B.J. Elder back in the game. The next stoppage in play, and Elder with the two fouls. Paul defended by the much bigger, stronger Clarence Moore. Eric Williams replacing Visser. Crowd thought he walked. Strickland hangs in the air, and it goes down for Trent Strickland, the sophomore. Showed a lot of strength on that play. Actually shot the ball on the way down because he had a defender with a hand up. Nice feed to Schenzer, and he throws it down. A badly needed bucket. Uh, Schenzer has been playing at a fairly high level top of this team, very quietly having a good year. Muhammad fouling Paul in the backcourt. Just basic basketball, screen roll with Bynum and Schencher. And uh, Schencher, the thing that he's been doing better, Tommy, catching the ball. His hands have gotten much better this year, and it's served him well. Skip Prosser livid with the officials. He thought that Paul got fouled two or three times before they actually blew the whistle. Uh, right now, Georgia Tech, the Utah and Paul Hewitt talked about answering defensively. That's what they're trying to do, and they're trying to turn it up a notch physically with Wake Forest and with Chris Paul in particular. I got to ask you, Mike, why are you putting Elder on Paul, who handles the ball more than anybody else, and Elder's got two fouls at the 13-minute mark? <laughs> valid question and uh, we talked about different people are going to see him at different times but you think that you'd want to hide him on somebody like a Tehran Downey where he could sit there and, and play within that well since Elder left it was a 5 to 1 score since he sat down a 16-5 wake run well, now Tech in his own that time so uh, trying to buy him some minutes not in the man-to-man. -man. Nice feed to the big fellow, but he walked. So it's a nice job of the big fellow getting down the floor. He's sure he's got in his mind that he can beat Eric Williams. You just have to know when to pass it to a big guy when he's got a scoring opportunity. It was a nice catch, but he didn't have his feet underneath him. 
Fourth turnover of the game for Georgia Tech, trailing 21 to 6. Closing in on the 12-minute mark here in the opening hand. Shot clock at five. Eric Williams wants the ball. He's going to have to put it up. Well, Paul's going to have to fire. And he's short, long rebound out to Elder. Did a nice job just to get it up on the rim to give this team a chance. The crowd facetiously cheering the men in black and white. What a start for Wake Forest. Last Sunday, knocked off Cincinnati. This past week, beat Duke. And they're rolling tonight. When the stakes are high, the great ones answer the call. Like a November wind, you cut through the unforgiving wasteland of company data and emerged with numbers that were once untouchable. You have the new Microsoft Office system. It's showtime. So we're ready in advance, ready with the right equipment, the right people, and the right parts, all at ready to go, low prices. And if it's your battery, we'll install it for free. So bring it on. We're ready in advance. For the best parts, people, and price, we're ready in advance. See? Now, aren't you glad that I wanted the heated seats in all this room? Liz, right now it's not about that or the DVD. It's about the Hemi. Power, capability, big time towing, end of story. Dodge Durango, the ultimate authority in winter driving. Think you can handle it from here? Thanks for the talk. The all new Dodge Durango. Big size, smooth ride, Hemi power. Starting under 26.6. Wednesday, Pac-10 basketball presented by Kyocera returns. UCLA takes on Crosstown rival USC. Then on Thursday, the Oregon Ducks and the Cal Golden Bears. Coverage begins Wednesday and Thursday, 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific. Time to take a look at high-scoring backcourts in the ACC. You've got two of the top three here, Gray and Paul, leading the way just under 30 points per Ewing and Reddick at Duke, and then Jack and Elder at 28.2 points. And uh, tonight, though, it's been Justin Gray carrying the load, 12 points. Chris Paul hasn't scored, but he's got three assists in the game, so uh, uh, filling his role so far, just not scoring the ball. Theotis Tarver, a sophomore from Monroe, Louisiana, has come on. Tarver missed the first 13 games of the season with a dislocated knee. He played very well down the stretch in the NIT run for Georgia Tech when they reached the quarterfinals last year. In traffic. And Muhammad headed to the free throw line. Foul on Eric Williams. Wake Forest did a nice job converging, but Muhammad got a nice cross screen to free himself up. And on the offense, and that's, he's going to do most of his damage offensively in the paint. He hasn't made a three-pointer all year. He doesn't have range like that. And, you know, frankly, on the perimeter, I'm going to start wondering when guys are going to start playing off him because he's a great driver of the basketball. You know, if I'm, if I'm guarding him, I'm going to give him all sorts of room on the perimeter. But when he hits the lane, he's a load. He had only hit 45 out of 102 free throw attempts, and he stroked both of them nicely there. Elder, meanwhile, back to the bench for Georgia Tech with two fouls. Uh, and, you know, it's, Paul here did a nice job massaging his time in there. Now they'll take him out for another stretch and try to get him to the half with only two. Dana loose. Off the mark with a three, hit a big one in the game against Duke. Two, two in a row to help wipe out a 13-point lead early in the second half. 
That's the thing with Wake in the last two games, they've come from double deficit, double uh, digit deficits. That is an offensive foul well, against Ismail Muhammad. That's his second. Now here's what I talked about. Play off him. Give him room. Lead him to the baseline. And anytime you give that little jab with the shoulder, you're going to get a foul. Well, now after a very hard screen was set by Danilus, McHenry hit the deck. It's a couple of games in a row now that Wake Forest has mixed it up. Of course, Paul had the encounter when J.J. Redick pushed his face away from him. Skip Prosser was slapped with a technical foul in that game. Well, here's the look, and hey, you know what? What did I talk about at the beginning? Giving him a screen. Now, he kind of chucked him with his arms, brought him up instead of being stationary. But Wake Forest talked about setting back screens to loosen the defender up and crowd coming down and beat it's Danilus right now. Well, I got to believe that that's got to be an intentional foul. I mean, you know, like you said, Mike, it's one thing to set the screen, but as a defender got there, Danilus just fired both forearms into McHenry's chest and chin. And I think they have hit him with an intentional foul. And they should. Yeah, no, no question. And, uh, you know, you can, you can do plenty of damage, Tommy, if you just stand still. If that defender doesn't know it's coming, a, back, a solid legal back screen is enough to loosen him up. But that, Danilus went over the top on that. Here's the look. I mean, it's right now. If I'm Nick Henry, I'm mad at the guy who's supposed to be playing Danilus. And there you go. I mean, he just rose up with his arms, and that was a pretty flagrant foul in its own right. But if I'm Nick Henry, I'm mad about the guy who's supposed to be with Danilus to tell me that that screen is there while I'm getting my head taken off. Well, no kidding. Nick Henry going to the free throw line. Only a 37% shooter. And right now, this is at a point referees need to rein this game in because Georgia Tech's gotten down and uh, people are starting to answer physically out on the floor. Let's see how, let's see how the whistle goes over the next two or three minutes. McHenry will leave. He has to be a little bit shaken up. I mean, that was a fierce blow he took. From Vitas Danilus. Danilus remains in the game. McHenry will sit down. Tarver missing off the iron. And Justin Gray brings it the other way for the Demon Deacons. Four set pass to Williams. And now Muhammad leads a break to the basket. Not there. A couple of poor decisions, I think, on the break by both teams. Make that three in a row. Things getting a little sloppy. Uh, That's a good, nice job by Jared Jack, settling things down a little. And he takes it to the basket where he was fouled by Paul. He'll go to the line shooting a pair. There's the, the look, uh, Wake Forest, 58% shooting in this game. The last thing you want to do is have a visiting team come in and feel comfortable. See the three-point percent, five of seven, and only 18% shooting for Tech. It's, it's probably surprising that they're not down by more than 12 at yep. this point with those numbers. Well, Wake Forest, in storming back in their last game against Duke when they were down by 13, shot 62% against a very good Duke defense in the second half of that game. And dropped 90 points on that ball club. That doesn't happen a lot. No. Paul will sit down with a couple of fouls. Jared Jack hits one of two, and it's an 11-point game. And now Teron Downey, who's played lots of point guard in his career at Wake Forest, should be able to handle this. And uh, again, you see Daniel Lewis in there and the back screen. This time McHenry was looking for it, though. Williams muscles his way in but travel. Williams been coming off the bench the last three games and has given a much better game starting with Cincinnati and then against Duke he had the double double and scoring and then time he's getting more touches he's got double double figure field goal attempts in both of those games so they're getting the ball in his hands 
Rejected by Gray was Jack on his way to the basket. And now Gray the fade away. Wow, is he had a smooth stroke. Four straight turns for Georgia Tech, and what a play on both ends by Gray. Carver stepped out of bounds. Six turnover for the Yellow Jackets. Justin Gray, 6-2, gets the block on the reverse layup by Jared Jack. That's a spectacular defensive play, and then goes down the other end and hits a jump shot. Kid's a player. He may not be all that well-known outside of ACC country, but those inside the conference know far too well what he's capable of doing against your team. He, he's the backbone of this team. He gives it its strength. He gives it its swagger, Tom. That's just the most important element that he brings. He will take the big shot. Nine turnovers for Wake Forest, yet the Demon Deacons lead by 13. That's five turnovers in the last six possessions now for Wake. I mean, they're trying to let Georgia Tech get back in this game. There's Bynum. Stone cold from the field right now is a rambling wreck. Right, Bynum, and usually, you know, shooters miss long and short. Uh, he's missing left and right. Jamal Levy nails a three. Tell you what, Jamal Levy is a marvel to me. 180 pounds, 185 maybe. Eight rebounds a game, can defend at four positions, knocks down a three. I mean, he is a critical. You know, we talked about Paul and talk about Justin Gray and all the other parts for, for Wake Forest, and he tends to get overlooked, but he's a huge part of what they do. Skip Rosser likes to say it's not how big you are, it's how big you play. And Levy plays mighty tall. That's what I say about you all every day when I'm here. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for remembering that. <laughs> Elder baseline lays it off for Marvin Lewis. And generally the story has been, as go the Ramblin' Wreck, they're generally led by Lewis and Elder. I mean, you look at the disparity in their numbers between wins and losses. Lewis in their wins averages 12 points a game, shoots 42% from three-point land. Elder in their wins shoots 37% from three-point land, averages 16 in a game. But those numbers fall way off in losses. No, no question. And, uh, you know, right now, Lewis is their leading scorer with three. He had three early. Give you an idea of how they have struggled offensively. This is a kid, though, who's really had a huge turnaround from last year to this year. You know, I look at the work that he has put in, uh, shooting 54% from the field, eight points. Over his last three, Tom, averaging nine rebounds and three blocks. Muhammad, the offensive rebound and a stick back. Well, you want to get a coach upset and you give up a rebound basket on a missed free throw for a made basket. Gray backdoor cut, could have passed it wide on him. Uh, and he got out, that time down, he got out of trouble. He picked up his dribble in a double team, but was able to keep composure and get the ball to swing to Gray. 16 of the 28 Wake Forest points belong to Gray. Jack lost the rebound out of bounds. Well, here you go, Coach Jeminski. You can get mad now. Yeah, you just, Gray hairs all the way around. Just get a body on a guy, but we talked about it. Ishmael Mohammed is a load inside. That never happened to the G-Man. It's true. My, my husband was brought up by wolves. But, you know, in most ways, he's, he's pretty normal. We like kicking back and watching a movie with us. Sweetie. Sweetie, it's on the DVD. And, you know, he loves to be outdoors, so we bought a Honda Pilot. And we take it camping almost every weekend. You know, it helps him to reconnect. The pilot, built by Honda. You see an old railroad line. At Franklin Templeton, our mutual series managers saw a chance to invest in an undervalued railroad, whose unused land helped it also become a successful real estate developer. Uncovering hidden value to build strong returns for our fund shareholders requires a unique perspective, one that's made Mutual Series a leader in value investing. 
Franklin Templeton Investments. Gain from our perspective. out of the Hong Kong underworld is to go back in. Jet Li in Rise to Honor, rated T for Teen. No but see in our line of work, I'm glad we have that insurance. Eh, uh, what insurance, Doc? Meep, meep. Uh. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> the one that pays you cash if you get hurt and can't work. And Dad's, it's right on the tip of my bill. Meep, meep. Uh, flapjack. Aflac! Aflac. Ask about it at work. Aflac! I think I knew the name all along. The Andretti's are synonymous with auto racing, but problems at home and competition between father and son on the track threaten to tear the family apart. Beyond the glory tonight at 9. For those of you on the East Coast, you can see it coming up at midnight. Uh, these teams are so evenly matched. Paul Hewitt knows how a loss at home uh, would hurt. And uh, it's been a very physical game so far, a very intense game as we thought. But right now, offense is beating defense. Wake Forest has come out shooting 66%, 6 of 8 from downtown. And of course, four of those belong to Justin Gray, who leads all scorers with 16. And he has a basketball. Visser trying to muscle his way to the basket, laid out to try and save it. Marvin Lewis pushes ahead. Georgia Tech trailing by 15. They get that down to eight or nine. They'll be okay by halftime. Uh, turnovers right now continue to hurt Wake. Good backdoor cut and a feed from Schenzer to Jack. Yeah, I'm, I, I like that idea by attacking the basket instead of settling for the three-point shot. Work your inside game first. Build some confidence. Downey running the offense with the freshman sensation Chris Paul sitting on the bench with a pair of fouls. And the floating left-hander by the Southpaw Downey, his second bucket. That's a beautiful shot. Right, I love it when guards go in and shoot that little teardrop and uh, pull up in front of the bigs. But you've got to sit on Downey's left hand. Try to, if you're going to get beaten, let him go right. That'll be a moving screen against McHenry. Look at Sia. Jack was taking a peek, seeing where the screen was, and that allowed Downey to get to his left hand and recognizing there were big bodies, including the 7 1 Schencher there. You saw Schencher uh, did a nice job on Visser. Visser trying to do too much off the dribble, and then the dig in by McHenry gets the turnover. Georgia Tech very good at attacking the ball in the post, especially when you put it on the floor. It's a huge advantage when you're Skip Prosser, when you can bring Teron Downey, who's been your starter at point guard the last couple of years, bring him in off the bench to replace Paul if he gets in any kind of foul trouble. Well, that was, that was the thing, Tom, you know, for the last couple of years, both Downey and Gray were combo guards who probably went more to scoring. And now they've got a true point guard in Chris Paul, so it really allows those two guys under normal circumstances to score. But you're right, it's a huge benefit to have Downey there, a safety net, as you were in there. There you see the numbers. Justin Gray really just came out seeing a big basket, seven points off the bench, not a bad effort there. Strickland missing the free throw, but Wake with a rebound. How about Justin Gray getting the tap out? He got a block earlier, and then he's sitting in there like a big getting on the glass. Rickland charges into McHenry. The 19 wins this season for Paul Hewitt. The most for the Yellow Jackets during his four-year tenure. We said the last time that the Ramblin' Wreck won 20 games in a year. you got to go back to 96. And Schenzer to the basket. Well, he has had some great 
simple basketball plays, the two-man game, and then slip of the screen that time, those usually result in baskets. Only the fifth field goal for Georgia Tech, and we're closing in on five minutes to go here in the opening hand. I think only one of them has come on the jump shot. That was the three by Lewis, everything else inside. Levy had it stripped away by Jack, and then Levy reached in. As we talk about slipping the screen, instead of Jack coming off of it, he just left early, caught the weak side defense, flat-footed, and able to get to the rim. And there you see the improvement, Tom. Look at those numbers this year as opposed to career. Almost over twice as many rebounds, over twice as many blocks. Luke Schencher has stepped up and had a terrific season. He only averaged three points a game last season. He's averaging over eight this year. So nearly tripling in all three categories. Well, you, we're not going to go overboard, but you figure what Chris Bosh would have brought to the table this year. He comes pretty close, especially in the rebounding and shot blocking category to fill that void. Jack hit them both, and that lead is down to 11. And the crowd smelling their beloved Yellow Jackets getting back in it. Now, uh, you know, plenty of time left in this game, and it's been a nice job of Paul Hewitt to keep this team's composure, knowing that these offensive numbers are going to get up, and they've just clawed back in it defensively, turning Wake over. Lovey can really handle the ball for a big man. Goes all the way in, and he's fouled on the way up. Well, I'll tell you what, Todd, I, I don't know. I, I don't have a lot of confidence beating this Georgia Tech team off the dribble. I think you've got to do more passing and cutting against that. The more times you put it on the floor, the more times you give them an opportunity to dig in. Lovey, a sophomore out of, or I beg your pardon, a junior out of Panama City, Panama. Played high school basketball in Florida at the Berkshire Academy. We will look ahead to next week, Mike. A doubleheader coming your way on ACC Sunday Night Hoops. You and I will be in Raleigh for the Tar Heels and the Wolfpack. Very close game over in Chapel Hill. Out of the zones by both teams in that game. Of course, the Duke Florida State game. Everybody knows what's happened down in Tallahassee the last two years to the Blue Devils. So I, I think a lot's going to get figured out next weekend as far as the standings are concerned. Hard drive to the basket by Bynum. But had to alter his shot and missed it. Now Downey, what a move to the basket by Tarad Downey. All right, he's going to show me. He's going to go right and make the play on the spin move. But you do exactly what he did. When you have a big guy in full retreat, you attack his body. And he just had Clarence Moore as a pretty good defender, helpless. Downey was seven off the bench since Paul's had to sit down. Jack with a three. Point game. 3.45 to go. There's Justin Gray. Not this time. And out of bounds. And Skip Prosser thought that Clarence Moore is shot. Levy out of bounds. There's the spin move inside. What a beautiful play by Teron Downey setting it up to Clarence Moore anticipating the left. He goes right. The Home Depot is more than a store. It's an offer that's too good to pass up. Right now, get no payments and no interest for 12 months on any purchase store-wide of $299 or more. Just use your Home Depot or Expo credit card. This extended credit offer is good on anything in the store, from carpet to lighting, power tools to lawnmowers, and everything in between. The Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. Just relax. Try to think of something simple like making a collect call by dialing down the center with 1-800-C-A-L-L-A-T-T. -T. It's free for you and cheap for them. Okay, my turn. Save on every call. Dial 1-800-CALL-ATT for collect calls. The 260 horsepower Infiniti G35, one of car and driver's 10 best for two years running. A dream to drive. 
the Infiniti G35. Festival presented by Sony Electronics, giving aspiring filmmakers the chance of a lifetime. Yeah! Win internships at Fox Sports Net and Fox, plus this cool Sony camera. For more information, log on to FoxSports.com or check out the show. Welcome inside our Atlanta studios, Washington, at number 13 NC State game you saw here earlier on ACC Sunday Night Hoops. Elian Eftimov with four three-point field goals in the second half. The pack comes back to win on Herb Sendek's 41st birthday. Alongside Larry Connolly, Mike Goldberg getting set for the Kiyosara halftime show. Duke also gets back on track. Do they just continue to roll and roll right through the ACC tournament now? Well, Mike, I will tell you, and I will tell the folks at home if they'll stay with us, I'll tell you the team that I think could upset them and not allow them to win that sixth ACC tournament. Larry tells us that on the Kiyosara halftime show. Let's go down the Atlanta road, check in with Tom Brenneman and Mike Jaminski. It is now crunch time in the Atlantic Coast Conference, guys. It's nice to be cl close to our studio show in the same city down here in Atlanta. The time you look at it, I think Duke's got the easiest road, a couple of home games, but the landmine in Tallahassee out there. I think NC State may have the toughest road yep. down the stretch here of those four teams. And then an incredibly important game for Maryland the one, the game at home against Wake Forest. And Maryland has three home games. I think they've got to win all three. Do you? To, to get back in. And that, you know, if it plays out, that could put them there at four and eight right now. And uh, that puts them at seven and eight with one road game left. Clarence Moore missing a three pointer. Of course, everybody wondering will the ACC get six teams, seven teams if you bring in Florida State and Maryland? Well, I think they're the two wild cards, as it were, right now. I think there are, I think there are five locks. Yeah. But, but how it plays out with Maryland and Florida State could dictate that six and seven spot. Five locks of two teams you have here tonight. Obviously, NC State, Duke, and North Carolina. Eric Williams fouled by Theodis Tarver. I think the key for Eric Williams is where he catches the basketball. If you can push him farther away from the hoop, it really, uh, I think, takes away from his scoring ability. When he gets in close, there's just no way to stop him. He's too big. So uh, sometimes Georgia Tech, nice job making him catch away from the hoop, but they bail him out with a foul. Mike, you've seen this kid now his first two years in college, this being his second year. His mother's here tonight. We've talked about her and getting 31 rebounds in a game. What is Williams going to have to do to continue to get better and better, really late, raise his level of play? I, I just think he's got to work on his confidence, Tom. I, I think he's got a chance to lose it a little too quickly. I'd like to see him be a better rebounder. Only five per game. He's got a big body. He should be more of a presence uh, on the backboard. So those two areas, just finding consistency, especially when he comes into league play. Another Georgia Tech turnover. That's eight of them so far. You get a look at the Yellow Jackets scoring. Their leading score, Elder, only one free throw. And Schenzer leading with five points. And Jared Jack, uh, the way we talked about him coming off the 21-point effort against Maryland, and he told me before the game that was kind of sweet going home. He's from that area, so he always gets up to play the Terrapins. Full court pressure. And Paul with a basketball. Chris has not scored in the game. Been on the bench with two fouls just until a couple of minutes ago for an extended period of time. And I think with those two fouls, I mean, he's a little reluctant to be aggressive out there. Well, since that hot start, uh, where Georgia Tech's gotten pressure on the jump shooter. Jared Jack, coast to coast. Putting his team on his back right now. Yeah, and uh, you know what? Point guards, and they recognize their team is struggling offensively. They have the ability to step up and score points. That's what they do. There's Williams. He got it down low, and you said it, Mike. If he gets it down low, he's going to score. He catches with one or two feet in the paint. It's over. And that's, uh, you know, they've got to try. And the, the, the Georgia Tech wants to get on the top of him or front him, but he, he got Trencher on his back that time. Kick it out to McHenry. Rare try from three-point land. That's not the shot Georgia Tech wants. Well, and right now, Danilus is playing ba basically center fielder off McHenry. He's going to give him that shot all day long, and he was digging in on Schencher on that play.
Talked about the seven footer from Hope Forest, Australia, Luke Schemser. We asked him about his development as a player these last couple of years. Being in seven foot one, obviously there's coordination issues as well. Growing up, always being tall, um, that kind of thing. And I mean, when I was younger, when I first started playing basketball, I loved the game, but I wasn't very good at it. I couldn't, you know, I didn't catch the ball very well. I couldn't dribble. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't do anything really. And I just, um, to where I've got now, I've just had to work so hard. Nothing, nothing's really come naturally to me as far as all my skills and that. It's everything that I had to work at. And, you know, going to the AIS was something that every day I worked on skills and coordination and, and all that kind of thing, which has really um, made me step up to the next level. Right, and you know, when you're big at a young age, coordination is the last thing that comes. I mean, your limbs are trying to get to know one another, and they're a lot farther away from your body than everybody else's. So I, I can definitely relate to what Luke is talking about, but all that hard work is paying off for him this year. Well, what a delightful young man. Very uh, modest, humble. We're saying, I'm not sure I've ever heard of anybody being a jerk that's from Australia. Uh, I was going to say, wonderful people. Jared Jack passed on to three, banks in the two. I love that. Struggling from the three, he knows it. Get inside, that's where you're being successful. Great decision. And now, trying to get it across the timeline, and they do. There's Wake Forest. Downey, bounce pass to Williams. Had it rejected by Schenzer. Downey, big three. What a half he's had. And that was a great recovery by Wake, not giving up on the block shot. And then that time the defense gets a little scattered, and Downey had the open look. For Ron Downey in double figures, he has 10 points off the Wake Forest bench. Of course, Downey does that on a pretty regular basis. At 19 at Carolina earlier this season. Well, here's the look. And now I talk about the block, uh, the tap out, and the guy right there. I mean, Jamal Levy has got a nose for the basketball, and he made that play by coming up with it. But how about the backcourt of Gray and Downey? 26 points between the time they're 10 of 14 from the field, 6 of 9 from 3. It's pretty good. That's big league. <laughs> That is ACC big league. <laughs> Indeed it is. Now with the basketball is Gray. Final 12 seconds of the first half. A half dominated by Wake Forest. The Demon Deacons have been sloppy during spurts of this first half. But a 13-point lead trying to stretch that before the horn. And then a foul against Levy. Offensive foul. Tom, to think about this lead, a 13-point lead, and they've turned it over 13 times in the first half. Well, the biggest deficit that Georgia Tech has had at halftime on its home floor this season was a the game they suffered their only home loss in this season against the Duke Blue Devils when they trailed by five. Jack at the buzzer. Almost. We've got to feel very good about where they are, but Georgia Tech still lots of time. Well, and uh, no hangover for Wake Forest after that big win against Duke. Let's send it down the road to our studios. Mr. Goldberg. Tom Brenneman, Mike Jaminski, thank you very much. Alongside my partner, Larry Conley, Mike Goldberg, welcome to the Kyocera Halftime Show. Up next, we go on the break and around the Atlantic Coast Conference. Maryland has advanced to 10 consecutive NCAAs. Is the streak in jeopardy? The Young Turks at number three Duke. The highlights in discussion all coming up on the Kyocera Halftime Show. Lastly, I've got an announcement that's going to make a lot of you happy. We're getting all new printers and all new copiers from a company called Kyocera Mita. Tell them why, Andy. They're simple and easy to use. They're people friendly. You'll access everything from your desktop. Jen? Because they're network friendly. They produce brilliant color with a cost of ownership. Tom? That's budget friendly. People friendly copiers and printers only from Kyocera Mita. Welcome back. Our big leader is Carl Senegrin, a bouncer from Saskatchewan. His hobbies are eating and lighting firecrackers. And it says here, Carl, you're looking forward to the seventh grade. You're going to be a teacher? No, a student, Alex. 
You mean you're not even in high school yet? Uh, what is no? But I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Let's get some harder questions here, huh, Alex? <clears throat> stay smart. Stay at a Holiday Inn Express. No Get a little out of line. The best thing about a being a woman is the prerogative to have a little fun. The new Chevy Colorado Crew Cab has the biggest interior in its class. So if you're ever uncomfortable, it won't be because of lack of space. Man, I feel like a woman. Everything's bigger in Colorado. An American Revolution. It's too late, Jackie's here. The bid's not ready? No. So how do we get it to Milan on time? Don't worry. We'll get it there. Go to UPS.com and schedule a late pickup. Or get it to a UPS drop box. They're everywhere. Or take it to the nearest UPS store. More ways to get small business done. UPS. What can Brown do for you? Or I could take it now. Hey, guys. Meet the new guy. Hey. Hi, I'm Bob Holtkamp. Hey, right? help yourself to some snacks. Speaking of which, you know what would taste good about now? Yeah, a big, hot and juicy cheeseburger. With everything. I can almost taste it. Telling me, if there are a place to get a hamburger that good this late, I'd not only drive, I'd buy. Really? Wendy's classic hamburgers are made fresh, so they're always hot and juicy, so you can eat great even late. You must be the new guy. Yeah, thanks. Wendy's, it's better here. Introducing Late Night Poker. The series that all of Europe is talking about. Only on Fox Sports Net. ACC Sunday Night Hoops is brought to you by Kyocera, the new value frontier. By MSN, life's better with the butterfly. Come see how at msn.com. And by T-Mobile. Get more minutes, more features, more service. Rolling through the Kyocera Halftime Show. First stop, Raleigh, North Carolina, Washington at number 13, NC State. Bobby Jones with a big first half for the visiting Huskies. Huskies were taking it to North Carolina State in that first 20 minutes. Jones put that one in and watch that follow by what is generally listed as a 5'8", Nate Robinson. I don't believe it. Uh, I didn't believe some of the things I saw from him today. And I'll tell you what, be a believer of the lethal shooting of Ilian Eftimov. Four threes in the second half. NC State survives. They win at home 77 to 72. Down Tobacco Road, Maryland at number three. Duke. Duke looking for their 40th straight home victory. Luol Deng scored the Blue Devils first nine points. Then a little defense. Yeah, they got it done right at the midcourt stripe. Sean Dockery coming up with a steal. Chris Duhon with a pickup and the quick pass to Sheldon Williams for the dunk. J.J. Redick would lead the away five three-point field goals 20 points Sheldon Williams with a double-double 18 points 10 rebounds Dang was 17 and Duke went at home and they win big so Larry neither NC State nor Duke could ill afford another stumble but let's look ahead to the ACC tournament does somebody challenge Duke's dominance on a neutral court in the ACC tournament forthcoming you know Mike all year long we have talked about this Atlantic Coast Conference and how great a conference it really is and I think it might be the best I've seen in the last decade there are several teams out there that could make a run at Duke, but I think the one team that really has a shot at them is the team that we're watching right now. That's Wake Forest. They've got a great backcourt. They've got good, solid inside players, and they play good, tough defense. After that four-game losing streak they had in the middle of the January, they've really turned it around. And, oh, by the way, they just beat them earlier this week. Justin Gray was beaten down the house here in Atlanta in the first half, hitting four of his first five three-pointers. He leads all scorers with 16 points as Wake Forest is up big at the half. This is the Keo Sarah Halftime Show. More people are winning with the Hyundai Santa Fe. It's loaded with standard features for 4400 less than a Toyota Highlander when comparably equipped. Now available with four-wheel drive with traction control and a more powerful 3.5 liter engine. And only Hyundai has America's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 miles. The 2004 Hyundai Santa Fe starting at just 17,084 with utility package. With Hyundai, you win. Come in now for great deals on all 2,004 Hyundais. Subtle inside.
what's playing this month on Video On Demand. You can start any movie anytime you want. You're either SWAT or you're not. Even pause, rewind, and fast forward, all with your digital remote. No VCR, no late fees. They set me up. Well, I just think this force has a lot of heart. It's video on demand, only on digital cable. How convenient. Issue 23 is a necessity. Cuyahoga County Public Library is one of America's 10 busiest. 650,000 people depend on it. For books and research. For children and teen programs. For homebound seniors. The library's already cut millions in books, staff, hours, and service. Now the only local funding is about to run out. It's half the budget. Issue 23 keeps essential library services. Vote for Issue 23, a real necessity. Welcome back to the Kiyosara Halftime Show. Yes, you would be dancing on Kremen's court if you hold Chris Paul scoreless in the first half. Problem is, Justin Gray with 16, Teron Downey with 10 to lead the way for Wake Forest as they lead by 13 at the break. Next Sunday, another doubleheader on ACC Sunday Night Hoops, one of college basketball's most intense rivalries. Number 16, North Carolina at number 13, NC State. Followed by the nightcap, number three, Duke travels to Tallahassee to take on the Florida State Seminoles. Our coverage begins with the Kiyosara tip-off show at 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific. Thanks for the tickets, Dad. Hey, how about a ride in our new PT Turbo? Wow. So we were in the market for a smaller car, but then we found this. I've got tons more room, so much more power. Check this out. So where are you guys parking? Drop you off. We're right over there. Yeah. yeah. You got one! Now everyone can get into a Chrysler PT Cruiser with this groundbreaking offer. Announcing Zero Plus. Get 0% financing plus a $2,000 cash allowance plus our 770 powertrain limited warranty. The best values in America just got better. See your dealer today. When the world's just waking up, I'm already out on the road. There's the Beckers. Our kids play ball together. That's the new industrial park we just built lines into. If you work for a local electric co-op, you're part of the community, just like everybody else. You make every customer feel like they own the business you work for. Because in an electric co-op, they do. It's the precedent celebration event at your Jeep dealer, where for a very limited time, we're offering great deals on our greatest leaders. Now, get 0% financing plus a $2,500 total factory cash allowance, which includes an extra $500 presidential bonus. Or, for just $269 a month, well-qualified buyers can buy a versatile Jeep Liberty Sport. But this President Celebration event ends March 1st, so hurry to your Jeep dealer today. Adelphia HD TV, as real as it gets. Call now for more information about HD TV. Issue 23 is a necessity. Cuyahoga County Public Library is one of America's 10 busiest. 650,000 people depend on it. For books and research. For children and teen programs. For homebound seniors. The library's already cut millions in books, staff, hours, and service. Now the only local funding is about to run out. It's half the budget. Issue 23 keeps essential library services. Vote for Issue 23, a real necessity. The best damn sports show, period. Weeknights on Fox Sports Net. Sarah, halftime show. Wake Forest on the road in Atlanta shoots 64% in the first half. The Little Ones having a big time tonight at the Thriller Dome. The two leading scorers, believe it or not, combined for just one point in the first 20 minutes. In the Big Ten, former Dukey Tommy Amaker and his Michigan Wolverines hosting number 12 Wisconsin, and everything was pretty good for the Maize in Blue. Well, the big guy getting it done right there, getting the basket and the nice pass, Bernard Robinson Jr. to Courtney Sims. 
For Wisconsin, they have lost two straight now, Larry. For the first time in 13 months, Devin Harris was the lone bright spot, but he would be bettered by Deion Harris, Courtney Sims, and Company of Michigan. And again, Sims receiving the pass right here from Deion Harris. Good afternoon for the Michigan Wolverines. They have won now 15 games. Back to our game, the number four offense of Wake. Unbelievable in the first half, outplaying the number five nationally ranked defense of Georgia Tech in the Yellow Jackets turn the tide in the second half. Well, there are two guys that need to pick it up, I think, for Georgia Tech. One of them is Marvin Lewis, and the other one is B.J. Elder. If these two guys don't get involved in the offense and get involved quickly, they could go down to defeat tonight. And they have already won. I'm talking about Georgia Tech has beaten Wake Forest at Wake Forest earlier in the year. And we know how difficult it has been so far this year in the ACC to win on the road. Wake Forest has good control of the basketball game after the first half. They lead 39 to 26 as it's number 15, Wake Forest, and number 18, Georgia Tech. Jared Jack leading the way for the Jackets with 12 points. This has been the Keosara Halftime Show. Enjoy the second half, everybody. So long. This is the one, the one Ford sales event with a deal you've been waiting for on Ford Explorer. $2.99 a month, 0% APR, or three grand cash back. This is on the one with a smooth riding independent rear suspension. The one that's been number one for 13 straight years. This is the one Ford sales event you don't want to miss. $2.99 a month, 0% APR, or three grand cash back on Ford Explorer. On now at your Greater Cincinnati Ford dealers. So, you want to open a checking account? Yes, but I don't want to pay for it. Right. And you want online banking? Right, if it's free. And unlimited online bill paying? I don't want to have to pay for that either. No, no. 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 So, you want total security protection on your check card, free? Look, I just don't think I should have to pay for any of it. Neither do we. Free checking plus, plus, plus with direct deposit from Bank of America. Higher standards. Like most families, we wanted an SUV, but ours had to be especially rugged because my husband was brought up by wolves. But he's really not that different than any other guy. You know, he loves to be outdoors, so, so we bought a Honda Pilot. Hey, Dad! And that's been a lifesaver, really. The Pilot, built by Honda. Sundays, experience Be the Creature. Get inside the minds of animals with Chris and Martin Crack. Be the Creature. Sundays on the National Geographic Channel. ACC Sunday Night Hoops is presented by Staples. That was easy. And brought to you in part by WebMD, redefining modern medicine. And by Bank of America, setting higher standards. We welcome you back to Atlanta, where the Ramblin' Wreck take the floor for the second half, trailing Wake Forest by 13, Georgia Tech's largest halftime deficit here at home this season. Our Keo Sheriff first half numbers. Well, I think the thing that jumps out of me, Wake Forest 64%. When they took care of the ball, they were very efficient, but they had 14 made baskets and 14 turnovers. And I, I think the key thing, though, time you look at it, the starters for Georgia Tech clearly struggled offensively. But nobody really came in and gave them a pop off the bench. Will Bynum, I don't think, has scored in no. this game. He has 20 points in the game up in Winston-Salem. Well, of course, these two teams tied for third place in the ACC. Three is the magic number here tonight. Look at from downtown, four of the top three-point shooters in the conference coming in to play tonight. Everything going Wake Forest way. Well, no question, they dominated that part of the statistical war. Jerron Downey, Justin Gray combining six of nine. Marvin Lewis hit the only three for Georgia Tech in that group. B.J. Elder struggled and again uh, was limited because of foul trouble in that first half. Only one home 
loss the entire season for Georgia Tech. And that was against Duke. Let's see early on for uh, Wake Forest how Chris Paul reacts. Didn't score in that first half. Again, he had some foul trouble. Let's see if he tries to be a little more aggressive with the ball. Eric Williams getting the start at center coming out of the half. And Gray, first shot of the second half, offensive rebound at Danilus, had it stripped away, got it back, and he's going to the line. Danilus and Marvin Lewis getting tangled up. But Danilus had such an outstanding year last year. Tony McHenry getting a technical foul on that play, and right now that uh, the guy with his target on his chest in this arena is Vitas Danilus. He has been very physical. Picked up that intentional foul early on in the screen. Justin Gray, nice job working in by Danilus. Now that's what I don't know about with Jack right here. Tried to make the play, but tough to throw it in on the opponent's basket. Well, the officials coming over and talking with the respective coaches. There may be a double technical foul here. And Venus Danilus picking up the double technical. Lewis also charged with the foul when Danilus was on the way up. Uh, Danilus has had a, a disappointing season, Tom, for everybody. And, you know, he's had so many physical problems this year. It's been tough for him to get in any sort of rhythm, but he's been doing a much better job here lately. Averaging nine and six in the last two games. We touched on it. He had two threes in that Duke game. And if he rounds into form like he played last year, that's going to be a huge boost for Wake Forest as they go into the tournament. They need Vitas Danilus. B.J. Elder to the basket and missed the layup. McHenry and Danilus. And a jump ball. I think they may have called a foul on Danilus. They did. Yeah, they're, they're, they're looking at those two right now, and they are on a very short leash. Missing the layup inside, and uh, Danilus coming over the back, and then this is where it is, reaching over the top, trying to tie up McHenry. Nice feed to Lewis, who missed the layup. Wow. Elder and then Lewis. Uh, and Danilus again throwing elbows after that play. He was lucky he didn't pick up another foul there. And if you're wondering, of course, the players who are hit with a technical foul, they're charged with personal fouls. Right. So Danilus has three after getting two just a moment ago. Paul muscles his way in. Missed a tough shot. And Jared Jack to the basket, contact, it goes, and an offensive foul. Now Paul Hewitt can't believe it. No basket right there on that play, and then that. Well, Paul Hewitt just, all right, let's move on to the next play. But nobody really stepped up to stop Jared Jack. I mean, he, he was looking around for somebody who's guarding him. He tried to carry it a little too far. McHenry at 6-7, guarding Chris Paul. Well, he came here as a point guard. Hold inside. McHenry came here as a point guard. And now he's a power forward, and he has checked into a game at every position this year, Tom. One through five. Uh, you know, he's not, a, he's not a polished or sound offensive player, but can get after it defensively. And at his length, awfully tough for Chris Paul to see what's going on on the floor. I mean, there you saw it just a moment ago. He was defending Paul. And before they switched right there, he was defending Eric Williams. Levy stripped on the way up, out of bounds. Wake ball with 24 on the shot clock. Talked about Lewis and Elder and their wins. They light it up from the field and beyond the three-point arc. In losses, 
under 36 percent. And that is a big part of the storyline here tonight. B.J. Elder does not have a field goal in the game. Levy to the basket, lays it in. All right, just a fundamentally sound player. He stays within himself. Jack bumped by Chris Paul, and that'll be his third. Well, that's another way. You know, they put defensive pressure on Chris Paul. And now with Jared Jack, he's putting pressure on him to defend on the other end. And... Uh, Here's a look. We talked about how physical Jarrett Jack is. Uh, equally good at going left and right. Elder hits a three and was fouled by Gray. Uh, Justin Gray getting a little carried away with the officials right now. And I think some of the players are starting to spend more time with the guys in the striped shirts instead of concentrating on what's going on on the floor. When you've got a big lead, Tom, the last thing you want to do is give up a four-point play and get a guy off who has been struggling mightily from the floor, and now all of a sudden is this the shot that gets him back in rhythm? Well, we remember that North Carolina game when Elder on six straight trips down the floor converted baskets in route to a 30-point effort against the Tar Heels. He had 36 a week later against Clemson. That's what I got. You got to let, it, let a guy like that stay dormant. Don't do anything to get him fired up. Downey hits a big three, as he did in the opening half. Teron Downey, his third three-pointer. Eight of 13 beyond the arc for Wake Forest tonight. Skip Prosser going back to that small lineup. And here's what we're talking about. Well, I mean, you knew that field goal percentage was going to come up from Georgia Tech. I mean, they had only had one, one way to go. But that was the end. This is a guy you don't want to get ignited, and it looks like the candle is lit. Five-second violation. Turnovers continue to be a huge problem for Wake Forest. I think Skip Prosser's arguing that the count started too early. And then an offensive foul on the inbounds play. Wow. That'll be against McHenry. That's a big turnover right there. A turnover in essence. After you started to sense a little momentum. Yeah, all of a sudden, you know, you come back, you hit a made basket or a three, and you get it under 10 points. That's what, that's what happens, Tom. When you give up a big lead, the margin for error is very slim in that in that comeback attempt. Whistle against Ismail Muhammad. Ran for the junior. From right here in Atlanta, that's his third foul. Now, we have seen this... Uh, Wake Forest team give up big leads at the half. They're up by N at NC State by 16 at the half. State comes back and wins that game. Gray, great head fake, and then rejected by McKinnon. And a reach in foul on Williams. Talked about the length of Tony McHenry. He was the second guy in on this thing, and that's what Justin Gray is drawn right now. Great rotation. How often do you see a jumper get blocked in college basketball? That was terrific help defense. Already 11 fouls between the two teams in the first three and a half minutes of the second half. Elder defended tough inside, and Luke with a follow. Fincher five offensive rebounds against Maryland, coming up big here for two points. And then Fincher with a deflection. 
action. Numbers the other way. Jack to the basket. Well, I look at a timeout here, Tom. Momentum definitely going. Georgia takes way. Crowd is into it. Uh, we talked about Luke Schencher. Nice look over the top, but then he doesn't give up on the play. Everybody looking at Elder, and he sneaks in on the weak side. And then the deflection on the other end defensively, which starts the break. The lead down to eight. Lastly, I've got an announcement that's going to make a lot of you happy. We're getting all new printers and all new copiers from a company called Kyocera Mita. Tell them why, Andy. They're simple and easy to use. They're people friendly. You'll access everything from your desktop. Jen? Because they're network friendly. They produce brilliant color with a cost of ownership. Tom? That's budget friendly. People friendly copiers and printers only from Kio Ceramita. What if all wheel drive had brains? Constantly adjusting. giving you the handling of rear-wheel drive and the traction of all-wheel drive, but only when you need it. Intelligent all-wheel drive that changes with the weather. Available on the Infiniti G35. Cliff? Yeah. I have a letter from the CEO at Sanders. Let me read some of it. 1,200 separate shipments, national rollout, everything arrived on time. I was asking for a miracle, and you delivered. Thank you. Shipping you can count on. Small miracles included. Everyone, my office. You too, Sam. UPS, what can Brown do for you? Our Bank of America higher standards. Five of the nation's top 20 teams in the Atlantic Coast Conference. NC State barely getting by Washington earlier today. Well, that team Washington playing very, very well. They won eight of nine coming into that game. But uh, those are the five teams that we talked about that are locked for the tournament right now. Pretty safe to say that uh, we're not going out on a, on a limb there. But uh, Duke, and I think Duke with uh, the win today against Maryland, a big win. They're up two and a half with three games to play. I don't think that lead is going to evaporate. No. But still, plenty of work to be done in the middle. Of course, Duke will slip from third in the polls after the loss to Wake Forest earlier this week. Downey got it to go, fouled on the way up. Well, it's another guy like you talked about, Mike, whether you're, you're referring to Levy or you're referring to Gray. Downey's another guy on his team. Not many people know about him around the country, but he is a solid player. Well, I think back to the opening game against Memphis where he had an appendectomy eight days before, came out and scored 20 points in that game. Beautiful little floater there with the left hand, missed the free throw. But uh, he has been a huge boost, uh, almost now tied with Gray for game-high scoring honors. Jack, he has by and large carried the load offensively. He has 14 points. No one else has reached double figures for Georgia Tech. Another turnover. Moore, nice catch. They got fouled by Justin Gray. Gray made a poor decision that time, just throwing it right into the teeth of the defense. A lot of arms in there. He had no hope of making that play. Especially, you've got 7 1 Luke Center in the way. They continue to talk and call his name out. He makes big plays on either end of the floor. Well, we talked about this high octane G squad, they call themselves. The bench of Georgia Tech averages 28 points per game. They've gotten a grand total of now five points off their bench tonight. Uh, and I think the, the, the guy who they need to get going, who is the scorer in that group, is Will Bynum. Yep, he's been shut out. 47-39, long way to go in Atlanta. You see a patient coping with arthritis. At Franklin Templeton, we saw a reason to invest early in what became the world's largest biotech company. 
Providing healthy returns for fund shareholders by spotting growth opportunities ahead of the pack requires a unique perspective, one that's made Franklin a leading equity fund manager for over 50 years. Franklin Templeton Investments. Gain from our perspective. The Home Depot is more than a store. It's an offer that's too good to pass up. Right now, get no payments and no interest for 12 months on any purchase store-wide of $299 or more. Just use your Home Depot or Expo credit card. This extended credit offer is good on anything in the store, from carpet to lighting, power tools to lawnmowers, and everything in between. The Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. Word has it someone here is trying to make a collect call. Just dial down the center. It's 1-800-C-A-L-L-A-T-T. -L -L it's free for you and cheap for them. We say you and I giddy up out of here and go hit a disco. Or not. Save on every call. Dial 1-800-CALL-ATT for collect calls. Automatic transmission. Standard. Then it disc brakes and ABS. Standard. Leather wrap steering wheel. Standard. Alloy wheels and 180 watt stereo. Yep. Standard. Let your Nissan dealer introduce you to the redesigned 2004 Nissan Sentra 2.5S. With 0.9 financing for 60 months or 2,500 cash back, we've raised the standards. We usually call it the G Squad. You know, that's what we like to go, go as, you know, the game squad. You know, when the game's on the line, the game needs a little picking up, we go in there and, you know, we try to do that. We have guys that can do different things on the court. You know, we have guys that can rebound, guys that can shoot the ball well. And we have guys that can go out there and do the little things. Getting rebounds when we need them, uh, taking charges when they're there, hitting open shots when you have them. Just the little things, the little things that really don't, you know, might not change the course of a game, but help the team along a little bit better. But Tom, I think the one thing that, that people don't realize when you have a great second unit, not only they're impacting the game, but they're impacting practice. They make you a much better practice team. It yep. gives the first team somebody to compete against. And when you have that competition, it really makes you a better team. You were talking about that at length last night. How, you know, imagine in a Georgia Tech practice, if you're on the starting team and uh, you're being guarded by Muhammad, or you're a big man and you're being defended by Moore or Tarver, uh, and you're having to guard Bynum. Bynum, exactly. You know, it, just, it makes you better. Turnover on the inbounds. That is now 19 turnovers by the Demon Deacons. Incredible. We talked about it. They averaged 14 and a half for the game. They were with Wake Forest concerned. One thing Georgia Tech can do, they can get you out of rhythm and out of your comfort zone. And right now, uh, Wake Forest out of sorts. Lewis bumped. And that's against Paul. That's his fourth foul. Fourth foul on Paul. He has not scored in the game. We welcome those of you joining us. Welcome to ACC Sunday Night Hoops presented by Staples. Alongside Mike Jaminski, I'm Tom Brenneman, our entire crew in Atlanta. Two teams in a third place deadlock in the Atlantic Coast Conference, both nationally ranked. Wake Forest got out to a huge lead early. But now they watch their freshman sensation guard Chris Paul go to the bench with 15 minutes and five seconds left with four personal fouls as this lead has been shaved all the way down to seven and maybe six. It won't be. It's five. Two or three opportunities now that Georgia Tech has gotten offensive rebounds on missed free throws and converted. Game is on. Justin Gray to the basket. What a shot by Justin Gray. And he had gone quiet. Uh, and nice to see now a couple of jump shots not falling for him. So he's committed to driving the lane to get some rhythm offensively. Gray leads all scorers with 18. That's his first basket of the second half. Traveling violation. That's interesting. Get, getting a low post move for Lewis, who's not usually used to operating down there. The second unit getting in and doing some work inside. Clarence Moore, you saw coming out of commercial talking about that, but he's now he's making a difference offensively. And what it does now, Tom, gives, gives Georgia Tech the opportunity to get back in their pressure full court. 
Blocking foul against Marvin Lewis. For Lewis, that'll be his third. And the team's seventh. Eighth foul, I beg your pardon. And the rest of the way, each team will go to the free throw line. You get a look at the Wake Forest numbers. Big numbers from their backcourt of Gray and Downing, who has started the overwhelming majority of his career at Wake Forest up until this season. Brian, it's nice to have a junior come in and uh, kind of calm the waters a little bit. And as much as we talk about Chris Paul, and he has had a fabulous season, he's a freshman. And you're, he's going to have games like this where he has trouble. He's, now this is a, he is the second game that he has struggled against Georgia Tech. He only had six points in the game at Winston-Salem. And uh, he's, uh, he has struggled here tonight. No points on all of two shooting. Downing. A rare miss at the free throw line. Only his seventh miss in 53 opportunities this season. Wake Forest generally a very good free throw shooting team at 73%, but only six out of 13 from the strike tonight. Bynum has not scored. He averages 11 off the bench. Moore to Schenzer. Couldn't get it. They missed three layups here in the second half. Elder Lewis now Shenson. Those are the ones that are making a comeback absolutely critical to make. Strickland to miss. Eight point game, under 14 to go. Bynum fouled. And he'll go to the free throw line. For Gray, that is his third. Brian, this is, you know, time you look at it. Buying him a great free throw shooter as well, 88%. But uh, if you're trying to come back, grind the game down, slow it down, get to the free throw line, chip away at it. And, and the way you do that is attack the basket and not settle for jump shots. He's made 20 of his last 21 free throw attempts. Transfer from the University of Arizona. Of course, Bynum this season missed because of the transfer. The first seven games, he was slow to get started, even from the line, hitting just 17 of his first 26, but rolling since. Well, even though he's practicing with the team, game situations are much different, Tom. I mean, he, he had to find a rhythm with his teammates. His teammates had to get to know him. So there was a there was a get acquainted period there, and now they've clearly gotten by that, and he's fully integrated into this offense. And then Bynum, a foul in the backcourt. You don't. Want to make a living trying to come back and beat Wake Forest by sending them to the free throw line. No, and especially down in. This is the one, see the reach right there. The one thing that Georgia Tech wants Bynum to work on his man on man defense. I feel there are times that he gets beaten right there, and that was a, a silly foul reaching right there. I mean, you're exposed. There's no way you're going to come up with that ball. Downey in his career, an 85% free throw shooter. Two of four tonight. Not missed a single shot from the field. Well, both teams coming to their respective benches. Had a lot of fouls called in the game here tonight. Already here in the second half, nine against Georgia Tech, eight against Wake Forest. We're probably somebody in the stands has got a whistle. They're announcing that over the side of the loudspeaker to put that in your pocket and not use it the rest of the game, please. And of course, everybody now is whistling. Of course, we were in Maryland a couple of weeks ago, and Gary Williams addressed the Comcast Center crowd about their behavior during games. He wanted that altered dramatically. Well, of course, the topic of storming the court now, which is, seems to be like an every game event rather than just beating a number one team or when it's warranted. Georgia Tech really missing chances after they got that lead down to five. This is off the glass, tipped in by Trent Strickland. That's right. You know, as I say, you give up that big a lead, and every possession becomes critical. Your margin of error just goes way down. Elder from the corner, too strong, and Levy the rebound. 
Levy with nine rebounds in the game. Nice feed to Visser. And he's going to the strike. One of the things they like about Kyle Visser is the way he runs the floor. Very athletic for somebody inside. And frankly, talked to the coaching staff, they weren't expecting to get dividends from him this year and this quickly. He's been a nice surprise. We were there for his coming of age when he had 13 against North Carolina yep. in that triple overtime game. Very strange. They put Visser in the starting lineup, and he deserved to go in the lineup because of how well he was playing. But since going into the starting lineup four games ago, his numbers are way down. It clearly has motivated Eric Williams to get back on track. Well, and Williams getting a lot more minutes in Visser now. Right, and he's, he's, Williams' minutes are the same, and but Visser now is playing front line guys. It's a little different than coming off the bench and playing against other guys yep. who are, you know, second tier. It's a little, it's a little different. It's a responsibility to starting. But what it does, it's gotten Williams four minutes at the beginning of the game where he doesn't pick up fouls. So that's another benefit to him. That's a reach in foul against Muhammad, and that will be number four on this mile. Both teams, both teams struggling with offensive rebounds on missed free throws. This her right back there, just hit one of two. And I got to think, I tossed out that number, he's 59% on the year. He's got a very nice stroke. I mean, he doesn't look like a 59% free throw. So you got to think a freshman confidence problem. I, I got to think that, that that number is going to go up as his career goes along. Hit them both. You know, there are guys who get up there and you want to duck when it's coming in. You know, I mean, you, can, you can see that right away, but he's got a nice stroke. Cover the women and children. Right. <laughs> Tarver inside. Not there, and Gray the rebound. Now that lead is slow to 14. Gray won't have it fall. He'll go to the line. Three-point shot has been a huge weapon. Frankly, that's the reason why Wake Forest has the lead in this game. Eight made threes so far to overcome a lot of turnovers for the Demon Deacons. Well, you, you talk about a future in this conference. How about Justin Gray, only a sophomore, like we saw him last year. Liked him a lot last year. He had the broken jaw in the game against Duke, missed a month. Came back, and like you said, game on the line. He wants the ball. There aren't a lot of those guys around. No, he'll take that shot and not even think about it. And uh, no, uh, no scholarship seniors on this team. Everybody virtually pretty young in the league. Now you think about this year, you think about what's coming back next year. Oh, man. Jack with a bucket, he'll go to the line. Uh, Georgia Tech, they have everyone back by and large except for Clarence Moore who comes off their bench and Marvin Lewis. North Carolina, virtually everybody coming back. Yep. Maryland, virtually everybody coming back. Duke loses Chris Duhon, but everybody else coming back. Virginia, very young team. Florida State is going to get hurt a little yep. bit by graduation. They're had it knocked away by Tarver and then forced a shot. Bynum on the back door cut, tried to lay it off for Lewis and had the pass intercepted. Visser coming over, got a hand on it. He had the block teed up, but he was able to get the deflection. Visser with a nice shooter's touch. Kyle Visser, we talk about a freshman, he has been very aggressive offensively in the last few possessions. That's the way it was in that North Carolina game like you referred to. Came off the bench and gave him a huge lift. One of the all-time great games in regular season ACC history. 
Jack on a great backdoor feed, and he'll go to the line. Again, simple plays. McHenry just a little pump fake. Strickland got overexposed on the play, and then uh, there was weak side action going on. See Visser teeing it up, and that was a nice job. Gray getting underneath him so Bynum couldn't elevate. Jack hits a free throw. 11 one to go. We're in hot Atlanta. ACC Sunday Night Hoops. If a relaxing moment turns into the right moment, will you be ready? Introducing Cialis, the first tablet for erectile dysfunction that gives you up to 36 hours to choose the moment that's right for you and your partner. New Cialis goes to work fast and can work for up to 36 hours. Cialis is not for everyone. If you take nitrates for chest pain or certain alpha blockers for prostate problems or high blood pressure, do not take Cialis. Such combinations could cause a sudden unsafe drop in blood pressure. Don't drink alcohol in excess with Cialis. The most common side effects were headache, upset stomach, delayed backache, or muscle ache. Erections lasting longer than four hours, though rare, require immediate medical help. Discuss your health status with your doctor to ensure Cialis is right for you and you are healthy enough for sexual activity. Ask your doctor if a free sample of prescription Cialis is right for you. 36 hours Cialis. When the moment is right, Will you be ready? Hey! Introducing the all new Toyota Tundra Double Cab. Not just big life-sized. Once you've experienced Dodge Ram with its available 4x4 capability and its 345 horses of V8 Hemi power, it's tough to get out of your system. Right now, get zero plus, zero percent APR financing plus twenty-seven fifty in combined cash allowances on Dodge Ram. They're some of the most scoring teams in NCAA history. And Thursday, March eleventh, they'll take the court to decide who will earn an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament, the Men's Pac-10 tournament, presented by Pacific Life. Starts March eleventh on Fox Sports Network. The ACC has a little tournament of its own on yes. March 11th yes, in the Greensboro does. Coliseum. And Tom, we talked about this season. What about quarterfinal Friday, the Whoa. ACC tournament? That is going to be an unbelievable day of basketball. And any of the teams that are alive that day are more than capable of winning on that Friday and losing on that Friday. Absolutely. That may be one of the hottest tickets in years for that particular day. And you will be there. I'll be there. On center. Of course, last year you were at the ACC tournament when the conference celebrated its 50th anniversary, and you were a member of the all 50th anniversary ACC team. Not uh, that incredibly Duke looking for its sixth straight tournament title. Yep. They won 15 straight ACC tournament games. Jared Jack, offensive foul. Oh, I don't know. By the 20th turnover by Wake Forest is negated by Strickland who got back and guessed right on the right-handed drive of Jared Jack. Is there going to be anybody left standing at the end of this game? No. <laughs> An all-time record for disqualifications. Well, Jared Jack had his, his second The freshman who has scored 53 points in the last two games, Chris Paul sitting on the bench, and Tommy has delivered in a big way. We go looking in and uh, stepping up is McHenry, but uh, tell you Strickland, nice job bailing out. And uh, when you get fatigued at the end of the game, you bite on that pump fake, and Downey did a nice job of drawing the foul. Ready, 
unbelievable downy. I ain't mean, talking so much about him, but 85% free throw shooter in his career has missed three out of six. There's a number right there, Wake Guard. Actually, the shooting for Tech much improved at 40%. Of course, the three-point shot not there, getting out, rebounded. And the Wake Forest, like I said, when they are not turning the ball over, they've been very efficient in the offense. Bynum lays it up for B.J. Elder. 11-point game, just under 10 minutes. Well, you wonder with Downey in the free throw shooting, he hasn't had this much ball handling responsibility in a long time, and his fatigue starting to play a factor with him. So even though Gray had all those threes early in the game and lit it up to the tune of 16 first half points, Downey's their player of the night so far for me. What do you think, Mike? Uh, and, and Gray, they've had an answer. He has not only three points, make it six. I said Gray was their player. <laughs> yeah, of the that's game. right. <laughs> We just we'll, we'll keep that one open for a while. Gray with 22 points down. He has 19. Elder got it to go. He'll go to the line. BJ coming alive. 11 second half points for BJ Elder. And it was that foul on the three on the made three point basket that really woke BJ Elder up. But he does have the ability. Now he's, he's, you know, we talked about his jump shooting. He's a big guy, and he can put it on the floor. And when he gets inside, he's got a knack for creating space for himself, which he did on that drive. Been a rough night for Will Bynum. Only one point. And here's Elder, a 79% free throw shooter. Three-point play is good, and that lead. They've got to get some stops, Georgia Tech. They've got to defend without putting Wake Forest on the free throw line. And Wake has been able to keep that double figure stiff arm. More intercepts the pass. And lays it in. That's a good start right there. Turning turnovers into points. And Skip Prosser sensing that he needs his team to take better care of the basketball. He's going to bring Paul back in. Jack foul, he'll go to the line. If that's Williams, that's number four. Yep, that's his four. And he thought he had a clean block on the play. Clarence Moore anticipating that, shooting the lane. That's what Georgia Tech does, really. They get out and play on top on the high side. And when you turn the ball over there, there's no opportunity for the defense to get back. Jared Jack has hit four of six from the line. 79% free throw shooter. And we talked about Paul. 30 in the win over Cincinnati, a career high. Came back with 23 in the win over Duke. Shut out so far tonight. Played very little because of the foul trouble. Well, that's, you know, he had half of those points against Duke in the last five minutes. Let's see how he factors here in the last eight. Nine point game. Prosser taking a big sigh of relief, but that just breaks your heart defensively when you guard for 34 seconds and come up empty. Foul against Teron Downey. That'll be his second. Our ACC standings presented by Toyota. NC State, a crushing loss against Clemson after knocking off Duke. And think about it, Tom, had they won that game, a tie for first place with Duke losing at Wake Forest, that's how much that loss meant. But they had invested so much in the upset of Duke over in Raleigh. That I did that game in Clemson, and just, there was just nothing left. Just for outright third place, the loser goes in a tie with North Carolina. 
Well, you talked about that quarterfinal Friday in the ACC tournament. How about being a three seed as opposed to number four? That could be the difference between a two-day stay and adios. Lastly, I've got an announcement that's going to make a lot of you happy. We're getting all new printers and all new copiers from a company called Kyocera Mita. Tell them why, Andy. They're simple and easy to use. They're people friendly. You'll access everything from your desktop. Jen? Because they're network friendly. They produce brilliant color with a cost of ownership. Tom? That's budget friendly. People friendly copiers and printers only from Kyocera Mita. I got you something. Hmm? Oh, you, you shouldn't have. Oh, this is nice. And here's yours. I know it's not fancy, but it's what's inside that counts. And what's inside is Labatt Blue. Wow. Huh? I love it. Break out the blue. Labatt Blue. Awesome gift. Oh, yeah. We got a problem up here. Tower 12, weather's moving in. Heading up. Do you have the right truck? Does it have a Duramax diesel? Now with 590 foot pounds of torque. Silverado, it's the right truck from Chevy. The most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. It's time you see what we're up against. Let's go. Try not to attract any attention. Look at all the stuff they got. Look, customers are actually being helped. Curse you, Iron Pony! Call the Iron Pony toll free or log on to our website. Next week, ACC Sunday Night News presented by Staples delivers a double dip beginning with 16th ranked North Carolina. Taking on 13th ranked NC State. Boy, is that a rivalry. And then later, back to back years, you mentioned, Mike, uh, Duke has been knocked off in Tallahassee. Our coverage begins at 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific. One of the great in state rivalries. And uh, of course, NC State lost a two point game over in Chapel Hill, 68 66. And two key guys there Julius Hodge, certainly a player, a strong player of the year candidate. And Marcus Melvin, a guy I believe uh, gives them confidence. He had. Uh, 16 points, 18, 8 rebounds tonight against Washington in that win. And of course, Rashad McCants from North Carolina making a, a second half of the season charge for maybe player of the year on. Absolutely. Brown wanted to travel against Eric Williams. Instead, he was fouled. And the big fellow's on his way to the strike. Two of two there tonight. Only the second on Century. Once again, the catch inside when he receives in there, he's a lot to handle. It's a big game for Eric Williams. When you talk about him coming off the bench, but he had a terrific game against Cincinnati yep. two games ago, and that's where he, I think he really regained his confidence offensively. Chip the glass there. 69-59. Still 7-15 to go. And 51 free throws from the two teams so far. Wake a little zone right now, change of pace. Shot clock at six. Elder to the basket. Oh! Can't let him get to his right hand baseline. Bad things happen. This is pretty good patience. They worked it around right there. Jamal Levy out of control coming out. You've got to close out. DJ Elder with the explosion. 16 second half points for D.J. Elder. Stripped away and a foul will go against Georgia Tech. Elder. Where did they 
get Muhammad. They did get Muhammad, and that's his fifth. Sometimes, Tom, you have to rein in your aggression a little bit. And I know he thought he had a foul, or a, he thought he had a clean steal on the play, but 640 left in this game. They need him out on the floor. You can't take chances. Take a look. Wake Forest doing a nice job getting on the offensive glass. Visser. That was tough. It's tough to see. There were so many bodies. And I think that was the, the that's what Muhammad was frustrated about. The referee making the call was on the baseline side, having to see through that whole scrum. Of course, uh, Fans were already in an uproar. They thought that Schenzer had drawn the charge. And that was before Visser ever got a hold of the ball to get stripped and Muhammad subsequently fouling out. Well, you know, this is for both teams. Like I, said, I said earlier, you can't concentrate on the referees right now. You can't get caught up on that. You've got a game to finish. You've clogged your way back into an eight-point game. You can't let that become a distraction. Just play through it. Well, there was 16 second-half points. He only had one point in the first half. Georgia Tech's leading score. It almost looks like a box in one. They're defending uh, Levy with Elder. Oh, and he banked it in. Are you kidding me? Well, Mr. Elder has certainly found life in the second half. 19 points after the break. Tom, if, if Wake Forest gives up this lead and winds up losing, they don't have to look any farther than the turnover stat. 22 for the game, and there's still five minutes to go. And that matches a season high for Wake Forest. 22, they did it once already against SMU. What a save by Elder. And then he fires. Rattled in and out. And a foul going to be called against Marvin Lewis. His fourth. DJ Elder, one point in the first 20 minutes, and then coming alive on the three that he was fouled on, and he's been doing it every which way. Three-point shots, driving inside, drawing fouls, and then this finish really ignited the crowd. Of course, it helps when the bank is open this late at night on a Sunday. <laughs> Williams to the line. And the big fella hits it first. He's 4-5 from the strike. Jack will get a quick breather. That will be right quick. Seven-point game, closing in on the five-minute mark. These two teams unquestionably on their way to the NCAA tournament, but trying to finish the regular season strong, improve their standings in the ACC, and improve their seeding for the NCAA tournament. Bynum, his first basket. Timeout, Georgia Tech. How about Luke Suncher, Tom? Recognition where the double team's coming from, kicking it out to the open jump shooter, and Will Bynum, he's got that scorer's mentality. He's got amnesia about what went on before. Knocks down the open jump shot. 
Well, the duo of the Lewis and Elder, the last time we checked in on these numbers, they were shooting a whopping 17%. That has changed and entirely changed because of Elder. No, no question. And you, and you look at it, the junior, he's got a perspective. All right, I had a bad half. Put it behind me. I've got 20 more minutes to come out and play. And he's done it. He's shown up in a big way. In Skip Prosser's career at Lake Forest, his teams are 60 and 3 when leading with five minutes to go. They lead by four with five minutes to go. Crowd one of the turnover on Downey. And now Gray. He's a man who wants the ball. Too strong. Elder drives into the lane. Now Chris Paul is really shaken up in this game. Tom almost turned the ball over on that play. Forced them in two straight possessions to take contested jump shots. Closest Georgia Tech has been since it was three to one. And we are not enough. Skip Prosser says, hold on a minute. Here's the play, B.J. Elder put his team on his back in the second half. Beautiful crossover, nothing. Paul didn't want to pick up a foul on that play. Too strong inside. And then Will Bynum coming in for the tying basket. Now, Tom, here's the thing. You're Georgia Tech, you've climbed the mountain, you've tied it up. You have enough to finish it off. You've spent so much energy erasing that big 13-point lead. Staples game summary. Georgia Tech is really heated up after a dismal beginning to this game. And the 22 Wake Forest turnovers matching a season high. Yeah, that, I mean, that's really the story. And that's how Tech was able to stay as close as they are. But really good BJ credit. And that's just mental toughness to hang in there. And things aren't going your way. You try to do other things to help your team. But, uh, you know, he, he hung in there and he has played a spectacular second half. 16 to 5, Georgia Tech run. Let's see how Wake Forest responds out of the timeout. What a big basket. How many big points did he have in that North Carolina triple overtime win? Really just came up big at the end of the game, and you want to see a team respond out of a timeout. Nice play by Wake Forest. Elder coming off the screen. Fincher lost the handle. And Paul, the other way, to the basket. Not there. Bynum races to the other end. No. Rebounded down. Two on one. Gray follows with a tip in. The thing, Wake Forest coming out of the timeout, a couple of quick baskets. Paul Hewitt wants to rein it in now. What a finish. 26 in the game for Justin Gray. And this is just not giving up on a play. I got a little two on one break. Down he goes with the left and playing bigger than 6 2. Gray gets the tip. Talk about how they dig in Chris Paul getting the steal on that play and then coming out. Georgia Tech not seeming anything, getting back and forcing Paul to miss the layup. What an amazing second half performance. You know, you talked about Elder and the mental toughness. Skip Prosser for two years has just raved about B.J. Elder. He said, that's the kind of guy I want on my team all day, every day.
Well, and, uh, and, well, and uh, Paul Hewitt happy that he's got his uniform on. And it's the thing I talked about. You fight all that way to get back. And can you finish the deal? Wake Forest with a nice response since Georgia Tech tied it. Paul Hewitt living with the official. He thought there were a lot of bumping out there in the perimeter. Elder off the mark and Wake Forest with the ball. 2.05 to go with a four point lead. Run clock. Yeah, Jamal Levy signaling over to Chris Paul to slow down. Run some time. Downey. Well, unless you've got a clear path, Tom, you've got to pull up on that play and shoot a little floater. Referees have established that call. Third foul on Downey. Don't go away. Buck 44 left. This is the one. The one Ford sales event with a deal on F-150 you've been waiting for. $2.99 a month. This is on the one that Motor Trend shows as its 2004 Truck of the Year. The next F-150. The one with the most payload and torque in its class. This is the one Ford sales event you don't want to miss. $2.99 a month on the best-selling truck in America, Ford F-150. On now at your local Ford store. Olympic boxing is coming to Cleveland. The 2004 U.S. Olympic Trials Box Offs presented by your local Northeast Ohio McDonald's restaurant. February 27th and 28th at the Convocation Center at CSU will determine the 2004 U.S. Olympic boxing team. Friday night will feature 11 exciting bouts, potentially including Ohio contenders Juan McPherson, Mickey Bay Jr., Aaron Williams, and Miguel Gonzalez. Tickets on sale now. Two-day discounted passes are also available. Purchase tickets at the Convocation Center box office, any Ticketmaster outlet by phone at 216-241-5555 or online at Ticketmaster.com. Be a part of Olympic history and support our U.S. boxers. Stop. It's the new Chrysler Pacifica. The luxury. The versatility. You can afford to look this good. Go. The Chrysler Pacifica is at a Chrysler dealer near you. Plus, get the 7-year or 70,000-mile powertrain limited warranty. The new Chrysler Pacifica. Well beyond the SUV. Now, all well-qualified lessees can lease the innovative Chrysler Pacifica for just $289 a month. Zadrunas Ilgauskas represents for the Cavaliers. Jamal McGlure powers the Hornets' might. Cavaliers, Hornets, tomorrow at 7 on Fox Sports. I mean, does it get any better than the Atlantic Coast Conference? And next week, a doubleheader. Carolina taking on State. The nightcap will feature the Duke Blue Devils. Led by the senior Chris Duhon and Luol Dang trying to win for the first time their last three trips to Tallahassee. Mike, we were talking, it, it really is amazing. I mean, every night in this conference, it is just a war. Yeah, and you, you have no chance to celebrate. I mean, you, you can feel good about yourself for about five minutes after a game, and then you look ahead and say, oh, you know. Wake Forest is trying for the first time in their history to beat three ranked opponents in a row. Yep. I mean, think about what they've had. Cincinnati, Duke, down here. I mean, everybody has that stretch. It really is amazing. This conference this season, and there have been many, many, many great years in the Atlantic Coast Conference. I'm not sure, top to bottom, that this isn't one of the top two or three best of the conference has ever been. No question. And uh, we talk about it. The, here's the depth that has served Georgia Tech so well. Six different players have scored 20 points, eight double-figure scores, the rebound. Every, everybody contributes, and that's why they can they can suffer somebody having an off night because somebody else steps up. Told you earlier, nine times this year, Georgia Tech's leading score in a game has been from its bench. You know, so when you have a guy like Lewis, as you, you talk about, tonight's an off night for him. Well, somebody else has got to get it done. He had no points in Maryland, their last game, and four points here. You know, they, and the B.J. Elder has ten up in Maryland, and they go up there and they beat the Terrapins. Elder hits them both, seven of eight from the line. Two-point game, 131 left. Well, and what
what Georgia Tech has been able to do the whole game is keep Chris Paul under control. He's had to come out and get the ball from the backcourt, and it's allowed them to apply full court pressure the whole game. They dump it down low to Williams, looking around. Shot clock at 15. Back down to Williams. What a move, just banging bodies. Well, how many times do you see a guy post up, throw it out, and then repost and get better position? Nine second half points for Williams. Elder missed it. And then a reach in by McHenry. And that's his fifth. Here's the look. You see the kick out, and all of a sudden the defender straightens up a little bit. Nice patience by Chris Paul, the repost. Clears a little space with the hip bump and makes the play. So Paul here is going to address his team, taking the time to replace McHenry, who is fouled out. Very second yellow jacket to foul out, Johnny Muhammad. Very quietly, Eric Williams, 13 points in this game and a couple of big baskets down the stretch after Georgia Tech had tied the game. Georgia Tech over the last two seasons has only lost three games here at home. Duke last year, Duke this year, and Wake Forest last year. And now Levy. Two of four from the line tonight. Only a 62% shooter, but with the big play down the other end time, 11 rebounds on the night for, for Jamal Levy at 185 pounds. Fourth in the ACC in that category. Incredible. And third in offensive rebounds in the conference. Levy hit one of two. Under a minute. Five-point game. Huge possession right here for Georgia Tech. Elder coming off the screen for three. Yes, sir. Quick timeout. Lead down to two. Elder with 26 second half points. All right, that was a well conceived play coming off the screen on the weak side. And BJ Elder able to catch in rhythm and go up. And uh, he's not going to miss that shot many times. That, that may be one of the great.